Hey, how you doing? So in this video, we're gonna be painting the orc rider himself, as well as the saddle grot on the back. This bit is gonna be fun. So let's go play with some paint. Right, okay, so I'm gonna tackle the orc rider first mainly because he's bigger, therefore it can give me a bit of a warm up before I go into the smaller detail on the grot. So first things first, I'm gonna lay down a dark brown. I want it to be a different color to the leather on the harness. So now I've got that layer of wet brown paint down. I'm gonna go back and start mixing in some light rust, kind of a, a terracotta orangey kind of paint. And I'm gonna work this into the, so not as a highlight, more of a mid-tone, and I'm gonna mix it in with the original brown to kind of get that blending kind of going through and build that coloration up. So it now looks very different to the, the leather from the harness straps. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So then what I did is I then mixed in some more beige into the mix to then start putting the highlights in. All right, onto the orc skin. Now on these beast naggers, you have quite a lot of orc skin and you can make this as complicated or as simple as you like. So for this one, I'm gonna keep it comparative simple. I'm gonna use a dark green and a very bright green and then wet blend it on the model to take it from the shadows all the way through to that nice, really bright highlights. So what's interesting is from the story behind the beast naggers, they tend to get in with lots of fights and stuff with big scare animals and have large chunks taken out of them and then get whole chunks of their body replaced with bionics. Now it took me ages to figure out why this face didn't look right. Looking at the plastic, even with the priming, I couldn't figure it out. And then it finally dawned on me. You could see he had like a metallic plate across his jaw, but what I couldn't see initially was that plate extended all the way right around his entire jaw and also the bit in his face that didn't look right, I couldn't quite figure it out because he's got a massive great piston where his, his jaw muscles would normally be. Once I figured that bit out, I was like, ah. But it's a great model though. Right, so let's start working on the saddle grot. And this little guy is quite cool. I like him. It's got lots of character in it. So I'm gonna paint his trousers and his skin basically exactly the same way as I did for the main orc rider. But also I'm going to try and pay attention to the orientation. So for example, when you're holding it, it's very easy to paint him as if he's looking at you square on. But when he's flat on the tabletop, he's looking downwards. So therefore, if I paint him square on, then all the lighting and the, the shadows won't look right. So I'm going to try and pay attention to that. So when it comes to the weapon, my initial plan was to paint this kind of cylinder, this kind of gas tank yellow. Then I went to paint the squigs. I realized that I wanted to paint the squigs yellow as well and it kind of just didn't look right. And one thing I've learned from doing these minis because often it's from your imagination and there's not like a, a defined plan or color scheme for them. If you're doing something and it doesn't look right, don't be afraid to completely change your plan. And looking at what color to do the other part of the weapon, there's already a lot of green, a lot of red on there already. And the opposite color to yellow on the color wheel is blue. Yeah, yeah, that'll look good. When it comes to painting the Nasher squigs, I started off with like a, a, a darker orange and then building up to a yellow. Now the yellow I started using was a, was a paint from the Citadel range. And even though I watered it down, it wasn't quite giving me the finish that I wanted. So I swapped that out for a Vallejo yellow and I gave a lot smoother, a lot softer tone that I was looking for. So one thing I love about this hobby is trying out different paints and different tools and, and pieces of equipment and exploring their characteristics. And it doesn't make it a bad paint or a good paint, it's just different. And if you can use those differences to your advantage, then it increases the amount of effects you can get. So I was looking at the model and trying to figure out what, how I'm gonna paint this hide on the back of this beast nagger. And I, did, I didn't wanna do it like red again because there's a lot of red in the model already. But I was looking at it and thinking, that looks very familiar. 
and then I twigged it. It's this guy. It's the Nexu from Star Wars. You know, the angry furry one from the prequels. So yeah, this beast now is taken on a Nexu. To do this, I'm gonna do like a beige base, then stipple on the pattern with a darker and a lighter brown. And the spines on an Nexu are kind of black or gray. So mixing a dark gray, painting these in and putting in the highlights where I want them to be. So for the shoulder pauldron, I wanna try and keep that Bad Batch theme, which I used in the Smasher Squig video. If you've not seen that yet, go back and have a look at that later on. I quite like that one. But I'm gonna try and keep that streaky kind of grimy look to it. So as before, I'm gonna sketch out the markings that are gonna be white in more of a, a darker gray color, and then go over it again and again and again, each time with the, the brush stroke in the same direction to give that streaky illustrator effect. But this guy is looking far too clean, far too fresh. So the next phase is gonna be the weathering. So I will be tackling that in this video and I'll see you there. Bye.